Hello, I'm with Nico Sedgwick and uh, at the Reinstitute for his show Family Snap Snapshots, um, May 27th through uh, June, no, July 15th. Okay, um, Nico, do you want to tell us something about yourself? Uh, I was born and raised in New York City. And um, I moved out to Brooklyn in uh, the late 80s, and I had been living there for the last 30 years or so until the pandemic hit when I moved up to Falls Village. Okay. Um, the title of the, of the show is Family Snapshots, um, and these are big paintings but they use a photographic process. And um, can you tell us something about that or the f images that you're using? Um, anything you'd like to like add to? Yeah. Um, the body of work uh, takes its inspiration from Edward Steichen's uh, 1955 exhibition, The Family of Man, uh, that um, emanated from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And that allows me to throw a wide net in terms of using images of people from all different backgrounds and nationalities. Um, they're archetypal images. Um, uh, a pregnant woman, a mother and child, uh, people cutting their wedding cake, uh, that type of thing. Um, and yes, they start out much smaller, the images, obviously, and uh, they go through an elaborate process of um, destroying the emulsion using solvents that cause the emulsion to deteriorate and melt, causing a painterliness that I look for in the work. So that's what all of this deterioration stuff is, and also it elicits color from a black and white photograph, which I think is a very interesting alchemy. And um, then I blow up those images to 43 by 54, which is the dimensions of these pieces for the most part. Okay. Um, do you want to walk with me and we'll look at maybe some of the rest of it? Sure. Um, and if there's anything in particular that um, well, one of the things that I often uh, am interested in when an artist comes here is how they see their work differently or what they're hoping to find here. Has there, it, we just hung it, so right. it's just at the beginning of that process in many ways, but yeah. if there's anything that you're trying um, more specifically to do here, yeah. if you want yeah. to tell us about that. Yeah. Well, one of the great things for me was to hang it was I have a relatively small studio. So I'm actually not able to see a lot of the work hanging together. Um, so I've had a fantasy of being able to juxtapose the, in addition to be able to see them all en masse, um, to juxtapose images in a way that speak to each other. So for example, this piece is called Seder 1965. And uh, it is three people. Actually, there's a fourth person in the background here. Three people in the foreground, one person in the background who can get lost, but she is integral to the piece. And they have a big cake here with a lot of writing on it. I'm assuming it's Hebrew, but I don't know for sure. The picture's not that clear. And I thought it would be interesting to juxtapose it with this piece of a couple on their wedding day cutting their wedding cake. There's a lot of activity in these pieces and so it takes time to really look and decipher what's going on. But if you look closely, you can see it's, it's his hand over her hand and they're cutting a wedding cake. Um, so those kinds of juxtapositions, also I do different iterations of the same image. So this is an example of that. This is a mother and child image of which I have a few. And 
So this is one iteration that I did of this image. And then the one behind you is another iteration. The difference for me between these two is I love the way the photos look after I do the acid wash deterioration part of it. Um, that's what all this stuff is. And just having some areas have color and glitter and different activity going on so you can really enjoy some of the original photograph. This, there's color and activity and glitter going on virtually over the entire thing. So more of the original photograph is kind of getting lost a little bit. Not lost, that sounds like I'm losing something, but it's just another way of realizing the same image. And I do that oftentimes, I'll do two images, uh, two iterations of the same image, sometimes more. I've yeah. done many of this wedding cake. This is probably the fifth or sixth iteration of that. In fact, there's another one in the show of the wedding cake image. Why don't we walk down and look yeah. at the other room? Yeah. Just one more room. Yeah. Now, family snapshot. These are uh, found from your own archive of family photos. Uh, it's not, found? it's it's my family, family adjacent, and yeah. other people's family. Uh -huh. um, this is another iteration of the wedding cake image. So again, a lot of the original photograph, again, post acid solvent, but is still in the photo. And there's just a few areas that I choose to have, to add more, to add color and glitter beneath. Unfortunately, this needs to get varnished, so it's not quite as visible. No, I don't think this video will. No biggie, will, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so this is another perfect example. So this is another image of uh, the pregnant woman, who's, I think this piece is just called Leslie. That may be all the Leslie in parentheses, pregnant woman. So again, this is another iteration where I'm keeping most of the original photograph and then just having a few areas where I have glitter and color underneath. And here's another, here's the other image of Leslie, where it's all filled with this. So I think they speak to each other and they inform each other. I, I have found that some viewers find some of the activity so much for them to visually navigate that they find it, they have difficulty discerning sometimes what the image is. But I think when it's juxtaposed with the one in there, they'll be able to, they'll, they'll inform each other. They'll speak to each other. And people right. will say, oh, I didn't even notice. Oh, oh, okay, this is her face. I can see it better in the other one. And now I'm seeing it here. That kind of a thing. Yes, well, there definitely is a, um, a wonderful experience of building up your understanding of the imagery and the finding of the things in the spaces that you've made. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm really happy that you're here, and um, uh, again, the show is open until uh, July 15th, and I hope you can come by and see it. Thank you. Me too. Thanks, Henry.